got an X, whatever I got, and it would be a male. What we want to do is see, after you do this a few times, if you come up with the getting of more boys or more girls as you do this. So let's take a couple minutes. If you have time to do it more than 10 times, uh, do it again. See if you get the same kind of answer. So let's go for it here for a couple of minutes.
Um, this is random. This is just a chance thing occurring. As I did this, I did it 16 times. I came up with nine males and seven females. Um, at first I was way heavy on one and then it seemed to catch up with the other one, but it kind of went back and forth and ended up with just a couple of more males and females. You might do a count throughout your own um, sixth grade class. Find out are there more males than females, check out the other classes in the school. Do we tend to have more of one sex than the other one that is born? Uh, you can go back to censuses of the last many years and does this seem to remain the same as the ratio equal of females to males? Are there some years more males, more females? Does it go back and forth in an even pattern? That's how it was decided whether you were a girl or a boy. Simple thing of whether that X or that Y chromosome, chromosome from your father paired up with um, the X chromosome from your mother. Uh, very simple process. Now, a lot of kids will ask, well, where did, how come twins get to be and what causes twins to occur? A couple of different things happen with twins. There's a couple of different kinds of twins. Um, you can have what are called fraternal twins, and this means that you actually have um, things, uh, twins that are not identical. And what happens here is that we come out with, we, we end up with two separate eggs and two separate sperm being, um, two eggs being fertilized, let's put it that way, at the same time so that the two eggs are both fertilized and it means that the mother is simply um, raising both children, both children are growing in the womb at the same time, two eggs have become fertilized. Um, less than 1% of the whole human population are twins, so this doesn't occur very often. It's about one, twins occur in about one of every 87 births. Now, fraternal twins means again you have two separate eggs. You can have two boys, and these boys are not going to look alike, obviously. You can have two girls, or you can have one boy and one girl. There will be things that are similar about them, just like there would be about any brother or sister, but there is not, um, they are not identical. Now, identical twins comes because you have a different situation, and that this is that you have one egg that is fertilized, and then that egg duplicates itself, or the chromosomes duplicate itself. You have one egg, and one sperm is fertilizing that egg. The egg then duplicates, the chromosomes duplicate, and the egg split. So you have 46 chromosomes and 46 chromosomes. They duplicate the, duplicated themselves, which means they are the same. And that's where you come up with your identical twins. You have two boys that are identical. You have two girls that are identical. You obviously will not have an identical girl and an identical boy. Um, twins. Now, twins, very simple process. It just means that either the egg duplicates itself or there are two eggs that get fertilized. So the question is, how do you come up with triplets? Um, that can happen in the same way that you can have identical triplets and that egg then would multiply itself, the chromosomes would multiply themselves three times or you would have three eggs in there. Now, go on with many more multiple births. There are other things that happen though in within those chromosomes during the development of this embryo or this baby as it's growing. Um, there, the chromosomes all are a, it's kind of like a signature of who you are. There are traits that we all have. There are things that you have similar to someone in your family. I want you to think for a minute of all the possible inherited traits that you could get. Let, let's start with that instead of thinking about, um, well, go back to your, to your, no, let's start with inherited traits. What are things that you can inherit from your mother and your father? Inherited traits. Remember, you're not going to inherit that bad knee that your parent um, hurt themselves with. But what are things that you can inherit from your mother and from your father?
which you can inherit from one of your parents. Now remember, some of these things you inherit, you cannot inherit all of them because you just can't. There's too many of them. Uh, some of these traits you will carry with you and pass on to um, your children, and they would pass them on then from there. Now, one thing would be um, curly versus straight hair. Okay, we could have hair color. We could have um, lots of body hair. And we could have little body hair. We could have scaly skin. Scaly skin. We could have different skin colors or tones. Um, when you look at how uh, some people have very light colored skin, um, we could have eyelashes. They could be long, they could be short. Um, we have eye color. We have freckles. We have different kinds of noses, and there's a lot of people that'll say, boy, I wish I did not have my mother's nose or my father's nose. Um, ears are also very similar. Um, dimples. Um, our eyesight, whether you are nearsighted, farsighted, your height. Um, we could have um, the length of your fingers and toes and whatever. Now there's a lot of different things here and we could go on and on. There's actually a possibility of 50,000 different traits that you have and that your body chooses to bring forth certain one of those traits and those traits are called dominant traits. The stronger ones survive and the other ones we don't see a whole lot of. Now there's a way that you can look at your own family and uh, you should have a worksheet there. Your teachers have it. They can give it to you. Take it home and look through certain observable traits and see how many of your, your current family or people that are around you. Call your grandparents tonight on the phone. They'd love to hear from you. And ask them the following questions. Um, let's take a look at some of these. One of them is called a hair whorl. When you look at the back of your head, does your hair tend to go clockwise or counterclockwise? Now you want to keep track of all your family members. Which of you go one way, which go the other way? How many of you are similar? Another thing you might look at is your hair form. Is your hair curly or is it straight? Take a look at your cheeks. Are you dimpled or non-dimpled? Another one that's kind of fun to do is, can you fold your tongue or not? First picture is showing your tongue folded up. The other one is just down. Another one is tongue rolling. Can you roll your tongue like that? Or is it not rolled? And that one actually is fairly difficult for some people to do. Are your eyelashes long or are they short? Do you have a widow's peak? And that widow's peak is the point in the front of your head, and this could be male or female. Widow's peak, or does your hair not look like this? Earlobes, I had never thought much about earlobes. Are your earlobes attached or are they free hanging? Earlobes. Got to think back, and uh, mine are free hanging. Makes it probably easier. Girls, it probably makes a difference on what kind of earrings, pierced ears you would wear, wear and how they would hang, whether they were, are free or attached. Your hair color, is it dark or light, red, blonde, brown? What is it? And you'll find that hair color changes. As kids get older, you might change from being blonde to being darker. Go back to when you were born. What color was it? Color blindness. Are you colorblind or are you not? This is a genetic thing, and for some reason, boys tend to um, 
take this in are, are tend to be more colorblind than girls do and it's something that you have um, inherited. Your eyesight, are your um, eyes normal? Are they nearsighted? Are they farsighted? What are they? Freckles, do you have freckles? Do you not have freckles? These are very observable traits, and like I said, your teacher has a copy of this chart. Take it home and talk through your family, see what um, they come up with. There's a few more here that I want to show you a couple of that didn't come out in there. One in particular is um, this little dimple in the, oh, let's see if I can get this in here, in the middle of the chin. And you'll notice here that this guy's got the indentation on here chin cleft, have you got that or not, okay? Now, there's a few other things that you can do that maybe your family members cannot do, and uh, some of these, I can show you some of them, I can't. Um, one of them is, can you do your fingers to make your hand come apart like this, where you can keep two fingers together, two fingers together, but separate them like that? Some people can do that, some cannot. Can you separate out, those are easy, but the middle one, can you do that? Um, other things, I gotta show you pictures because I can't do these particular things. Um, one is to take a look, <laughs> I love this one, at your toes. Can you spread your toes? Can you wiggle your little toes sideways without moving any of your other toes? Okay, another one here is what I call double jointed. And now my kids can do this, I cannot do this. Can you do this with your fingers? Can you be double jointed? Okay, without bending the other joints, totally straight. Or can you take your thumb and bend it forwards here and bend it backwards on that part of your thumb? Different things to try. This would be good dinner time conversation tonight. What can you do that your family members can't? Now, all of these are things that you inherit. They make you be you. Sometimes you look very much like another family member, and other times it's like, you don't look like anybody, and do you really belong to that family? Well, don't worry about it. This is the way it goes. Um, Sometime in your life, you're going to come up with somebody that does look very similar to you. you know, I look at my own younger son, and to me, he is very, very much looks like my father, just in the shape of the head and the coloring. My older son doesn't at all. I have a couple of pictures here. This is an interesting one, where I want you to take a look at this. This is a man that was born in 1895. Take a close look at the face here. And this is the great-grandfather of this picture. Let me show you another one here. Move this out a little bit. Um, this is the great-grandfather of this fella. And I don't know if I can show you both of these at the same time here. And how similar they are. You know, the first things I looked at here as I looked at these, let me go a little bit wider, see if we can see both of them is you'll notice just in the, in the hair, look how closely the forehead is. There is no widow's peak. Um, let me move this a little bit in a little bit closer. And then you have the shape of the nose. Now, this is a great grandfather. This is the great grandson. Um, let me show you here. Paul, will you come up here and stand and look at the camera? Paul, I think you need to take your glasses off, though, so that we can get the real look here to compare this. This is the father, how do we talk, you are the father, Paul, okay, of, of the, the younger boy. And this picture, okay, now let's go back and look at the other two here. Back on the Elmo, and again, you see quite a resemblance there. Um, this is a son, a father, and a great-grandfather. Now, the great-grandfather and the um, child were actually about the same age um, when those pictures were taken. Paul, thank you. Paul just happened to have these pictures with him. Uh, you might go back, look at family albums. Go way back into your grandparents and your great-grandparents. And you got to get away from the hairstyles and the kind of clothes they're wearing. But there is a, a similarity that is there. Now, what happens when you have 
a chromosome that is not the same, or that you don't have equal amounts of chromosomes. Let's say that you come up with an extra chromosome. Is this something that is going to add to us? Does this mean we're like a superhuman person? Well, unfortunately, uh, usually it means that there is a problem. And the doctors can check your chromosome makeup and figure this out. Now, if we take a look at a chart that looks like this, this is what doctors actually do, is that they will pull out your chromosomes. And um, they can, this is, these have to be magnified many times, they can identify what chromosomes are chromosomes. And they have numbered them. And each numbered chromosome uh, has a specific purpose. And you'll notice they're a little different in shape. Now, down here, you get down here to number 21, and we seem to have three of them instead of just two. Scientists have been able to identify that when they find three of this number 21, that that child is probably going to be somewhat um, mentally retarded. There will be a problem in the birth here. Um, they can find missing chromosomes. Sometimes there is only one instead of two of them. Or one of the chromosomes might be missing one of its legs. And I'm looking for an example here. I cannot find it. But let's say that one of the legs here was off of the um, chromosome. That would not be a matching pair. And that's when you get things that they call mutations or that it looks different. Um, it is one mutation that we might find, and it's caused by a missing chromosome, is an albi alban albinism. And this means that um, you do not have, uh, you are very, very white. Um, this particular picture shows the mouse being white. You have seen people that have very, very white hair. Their skin is very white. Their eyes are very sensitive to um, sunlight. And that is a genetic thing. It is not something that they can change. It was something that they were born with. And again, this causes a, um, what's called, it's an albino. And they just are very sensitive to the sunlight and need to be very careful with it. Um, we covered a lot of territory here. There is one more thing that I want to go through and kind of explain these recessive and dominant genes. What makes you have? brown eyes or blue eyes or whatever. And I think this picture might explain what happens here. Um, all of your, your genes, such as your, whether you are tall or short or brown eyes or blue eyes or green eyes, one is dominant and one is recessive. And let's say here that we have how you inherit your eye color here as an example. The mother has blue eyes. She's got two blue eye genes. The father has brown eyes, but he actually has a brown-eyed gene, and then he has a blue-eyed gene. Now, if he passes on the brown-eyed gene and she passes on the blue-eyed gene, this kid will come out with brown eyes. The brown is more dominant. I'm probably confusing you here. You can also, though, get from these same parents, your brother or sister, such as this little girl, has blue eyes. She got a blue-eyed gene from the mother. She got a blue-eyed gene from the father. This other child, again also, picked up the brown-eyed gene, which is more dominant. It is stronger. It overpowered the blue one that he got from his mother, and he came out with brown eyes. Last one down here is a blue eye, and a blue eye comes from the both parents passed on that blue-eyed gene. Now, remember that you are not necessarily going to look exactly like the rest of your family members. You don't have to. There are things that are different. These inherited traits, there are many different kinds. You can look very different from everyone else and still belong to the same family. I want you to go home and take a look at the rest, of, like I say, the rest of your family members and see what you do have that are similar traits and what you don't. Some of these traits, you may not want to have the same thing. Um, things such as um, being very physical and being very active. That is not an inherited thing. Um, it gets to be a fine line there as to what is inherited and what isn't. Get your encyclopedia out, go to the library, do some looking up of what more on inherited traits. Guys, have a good weekend. Um, we'll be back next week, and we're going to talk about hormones and what hormones do to you and to the rest of us. Bye-bye. <laughs>